think we're fortunate to have my good friend, Duncan Cameron, who's world renowned. Yeah. If you thought the movie was interesting, Duncan has had experiences that are beyond anything we can imagine. And you have experienced those realms. It has been mind-bending. You've had to adjust to back into a kind of human sphere. Can you talk about that process of encountering and being traumatized in a sense and having to readjust back to this reality? Or maybe... Um, yes, I was uh, um, in a number of research projects back in the 70s and 80s that actually um, created a fixed time loop back into the 40s, which was a experimentation during wartime um, called the Rainbow Project Philadelphia Experiment, uh, where a certain X amount of people were back there in the 40s and in the 80s. And part of the dynamics that happens during a processing out of this physical realm. What I know, there are 12 potentials in this realm that come in and can manifest. There are certain local realities and consciousness that steer this inertia and framework. We're moving in a direction. There's a local collective consciousness. When someone steps out of that collective, there's almost a snapping back. Because it's not allowed. I mean, it's well, it's not allowed. It's because we're all being, we have this elemental part of us that is in our subconscious that the animal is way down in the subconscious, ninth and tenth subconscious, that actually is scanning everyone here, the animal, which is a protective hunker down food sexuality, is scanning here for our safety and health and welfare. So you experienced realities that were incomprehensible to the human mind in that sense. In a, in a sense, my training basically was, I was next to a, uh, um, a nuclear detonation device that blew out my psyche. So what was happening linearly in time was happening simultaneously. There wasn't an accounting of what I know of time as movements moving in a particular direction with a reflection back, an accounting of it, and therefore validating this physical existence. I think you just blew out my psyche. When you, when, you, when you don't have as a voice is reflecting off the wall, if there's not a reflection back, there is not an, an accounting of one's existence. So it's an annihilation of ego sense. It uh, 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 could, could be. I mean, but what, what I'm driving at is this physical reaction, reality in the direction we're moving, we're continually to processing it and helping it. We've actually got to what I know from some of research with Preston Nichols, we're actually out, we've gone through this process seven times all right. We've, as a reality, we back down and we started again. All the records have been erased, folks. We're on the eighth term, which is kind of infinity. I think we're gonna make it this time. <laughs> and, and consciousness is rising, so the idea is to try to be conscious of your surroundings, what you're doing, where you, and bring up that animal part of you, which is not the food shelter. Basically, it's your sensory mechanism of your body. Anyone here, if they just step aside, it's body, um, body positioning. 18 inches either side, wherever you stand or sit, adjust that way. Because your body, that 3D, the ego part of you, is going to position you in a familiarity in this physical framework, this time inertia. So Step so out of that yeah, by just moving a foot 18 inches okay. and you're more connected to who you truly are. Duncan, you've had, you've had like 13 abductions. Could you just briefly mention some of those experiences? Um, yeah, um, most of mine having to do with the military. Um, I, I was groomed for a number of experimentations. Um, it had to do with making sure I was online to be somewhat traumatized and abused in order to get to the point where I would accept information and commands without questioning, which is a perfect military person.